Hi, this is James from Sunbank Solar, and I'm going to walk you through a typical rooftop comp shingle installation. Just done the layout and chalk of where the sunbank will go. Put our horizontal rail uh, strut pieces that we're going to mount onto our uh, roof attachments, and then we're going to put together the bracket and mount that to the rail. So uh, that's the first step. We've already run the plumbing that's in the attic now, and we'll stub that out through the roof and into the sunbank tank. So now that we've got the bracket set up, and we've chosen where on the roof we're going to put the bracket. We've gone ahead and put in the uh, strut with the roof attachments uh, for the top underneath the tank. Uh, the reason we put in strut there is we're able to hit every rafter, so every two feet on center in this case. We put a roof attachment and a lag bolt in. Um, most of the weight obviously is going to be underneath the tank and so uh, it's important to get a good attachment up system up top. Uh, and down below we are going to actually just put in the attachments with L-feet directly attached to them and I'll show you how to do one of them. Uh, there, are, there are more instruction videos on the quick mount or snap and rack or whatever roof attachment system you're using on their, on their YouTube or website. Uh, but come on down, I'll show you how, how this works. So we've gone ahead and positioned the, the bracket and we've chalked, chalked out where the flashing should go. Um, so in order to install the flashing, um, first step is to you know, separate the shingle, make sure that's coming up so that uh, you can slide the flashing underneath there, there we go. And then you want to position flashing, there we go, so we're going on that bottom chalk mark there. There it is. Now we will, with the 7 30 seconds bit, you're going to drill a pilot hole for the lag. All right. So we can take that back out. That should come up with, with the wood chip. That tells us that we are indeed hitting the rafter. Uh, once you got your hole there, you want to put some goop down in this hole, just as a backup to the system you're doing here, so it's nice to be generous with that. So, and we're going to put our flashing back underneath. Line it up with our chalk mark. All right, and you see we're lining up the flashing with the bottom of the shingle course there. And then we are going to put in our little rubber grommet for this quick mount uh, PV mount there. And we're gonna have the L foot facing this way, the way we've measured it out. So put that on, we're going to Put the lag in here, and then with our impact driver, which needs a battery, go ahead and cinch this down. You want to cinch it down until this block can't turn anymore. Okay, and that's how you put in the uh, put in the flashings. This one's going to be a direct flashing. You'll see later. This is the bracket's going to hook to the to the strut up there, and I'll show you how that goes. So before we mount the tank, uh, I want to show you one one thing that we did here. Two different two different styles for how to attach the bracket to the roof. Uh, in the bottom. As I noted before, we did the rail system, and then on the top we did a piece of strut across these quick mount uh, roof mounts, which work really well for mounting strut. So, um, and we'll take a closer look. Um, you know, for, for the bottom, for example, because we don't have that strut, uh, you have to be really precise. You know, you have to lag into the rafter, and then this has to line up just right, uh, which is not as simple where, for example, up here on the strut, you know, you can just focus on getting these roof attachments into the rafters 
as you would. Uh, this, this roof helps because we have sistered rafters, so uh, a little thicker. But uh, a normal roof, you wouldn't be able to do that. So, uh, and then you can either, you can put attached to the strut, you know, either here on the outside or you can attach on the inside and you can move the bracket around on the strut and it gives you a lot of, a lot of longitude there for, um, you know, for not having to line it up perfectly like you do at the bottom. So just wanted to point that out and then we'll uh, go ahead and get the tank mounted. We got the tank mounted onto the bracket. Uh, this will allow us to line up our plumbing runs. For this one, we're gonna shoot the plumbing straight into the attic and then over to the water heater that we're preheating. Um, in another case, you could take the plumbing up and over the roof, uh, but this one, we're just gonna go straight into the attic. And uh, so the next videos we'll have, uh, next components of this will be the plumbing. So we're back at the uh, water heater downstairs. This is the conventional natural gas water heater that we're preheating um, in this plumbing schematic. So uh, the easiest way to kind of illustrate how this works is to trace the cold line, typically the cold water in its path. So if we kind of look in here, uh, we can see that this is the cold side of the, of the water heater and this is where the cold side used to come in. So uh, we broke that connection or we, we unscrewed it really and then we unscrewed the old hot connection and the cold water now is going, you know, from the city main and it's going around and um, you, it's going to be hard to see it back there. But basically uh, it branches off to the um, to the mixing valve first, then to the four and a half gallon expansion tank, which is down here. Um, and then what it does from there is it goes up to the sun bank. So sending cold water up to the sun bank uh, with this. Um, valve being closed is what forces that water up there. We of course have the drain valve here um, for draining the sun bank if necessary. Uh, so then the hot water, preheated water, comes back from the sun bank and it comes in here and then we've got the conventional water heater bypass uh, set up here. So right now we're actually bypassing this natural gas water heater. So uh, we've got this closed this one closed and then this one in the middle is open. And so that means the water from the sun bank goes straight into the hot side of the mixing valve and then onto the house from there. So you can see that it's really easy. You toggle three uh, ball valves. If you go like this and like this and like this, we are preheating the, the water heater again. So it's really easy to switch back and forth between solar preheating solar only or conventional only so um, it's it's a really versatile way to, to plumb the system um, all of this these components and everything in these videos is available from local hardware stores and of course we are always available to answer any questions that you might have all right, so now that we've done the plumbing coming back up to the roof and uh, finishing up up here um, so we've gone ahead and done the plumbing on the roof and the tank has actually been filled with water at this point. I um, want to make one plumbing note here. Uh, so when you're making these attachments on the tank, uh, both this side cap, if you're using a cap there, and the fittings underneath the tank where those, uh, those nipples come out, you need to take those out and, uh, and then with every fitting on there, put uh, some pipe thread sealant on the male and the female threads of the fitting, and then Teflon tape, at least four wraps, over the male threads. And then that's how you get a watertight seal on this tank. So uh, really important um, that you do that so that when you, you know, fill this with 80 gallons of water, you don't have to come back and drain it and then fix it and fill it again. So um, just wanna you know, note that. Um, so definitely take out those fittings and re-Teflon tape them. Um, you can see what we've done here. So we've gone ahead and gone the plumbing. So um, we're using these uh, solar flashings from Odie. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I'll just come around you stay there. Um, you could also use something like this. This is another type of flashing. Uh, we decided to flash each pipe for this. And then it's insulated. And then you have this silver butyl tape on top of that. Uh, we'll go ahead back and we'll move this down a touch and we'll put, um, um, put some, um, some elbows over this to protect that from UV. Um, so, but you could also use something like this, you know, put this up to the tank 
and then bring the pipe down to that. It just really depends on your installation. Uh, you can see we've got the temperature sensor wire run to here. Um, and you know these flashings are in here, so uh, everything's nice and watertight. Um, one other kind of finishing touch up on the tank on the roof is that, of course, you want to get the air vent and the temperature and pressure valve put into the tank. Um, use uh, for those, I just use the thread sealant, and then you want to point the, the temperature and pressure valve to the back so that you can run um, some. This is PVC. You could also do it in copper. But you want to run the, the discharge from this all the way down to the drain there so that you, know, you don't have really hot water on the roof material. So um, that's, those are kind of the final touches on the roof. And then the next step is that we will be putting in the tubes. Okay, so a couple other quick points. So we got the tubes installed and everything is working and ready to go. We'll be producing solar heat tomorrow. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, we leave a little bit of play in these pieces, a little bit of room. So I want you to note that the bottom bracket should be up from the, uh, from the bottom of the bracket. And that's about an inch. It could go about an inch and a half. Um, and you'll wanna note that, for example, when you're putting in your L feet, you can notice this L foot right here is blocking the bottom bracket from going up any further. And so you'll just want to be cognizant of that. That's one just small detail that you know, you'll want to make sure you get right. Obviously, if you have this at the bottom, you could move the, the tank down from the top and that would achieve the same result. But we do leave a little bit of extra in this piece so that um, you, know, you have some room depending on your roof situation and it's not just uh, too tight. So I think that's it. Uh, Sunbank is installed. I'm looking forward to having some solar heat. And uh, thanks for watching.